idea for the Triangle Awards were just to acknowledge fellas locally in the clubs who had given a lifetime of service to Common Loot Class. Gail maybe never made the videos of the big days in Croke Park, but without them there wouldn't be any big days in Croke Park for anybody. So that's why we started it off. And over the years, well, the thing like Little Acorn, the oak has grown. And we're delighted, absolutely thrilled, to have here with us this evening the Gales from Port Lauderdale, Kilkenny, August Tipperdon. And it was a lean year, I suppose, for Tipperary. Will I be shot for saying that? Yes, but you're forgetting something. We have an All-Ireland winner medal. You people mightn't have been thinking of it, but we were in the Triangle Awards, and it gives us great pleasure this evening that we have the member of the Tipperary All-Ireland and winning team here. She's a lady. She's from Kilsheelan. She's from Maeve Stokes. And Paddy Adkin says this too, but we're giving an award to Maeve Stokes. So it's our first venture into Camogie. <laughs> Uh, you know, we have this little bit of a communism as well as everything else. So, now we begin this evening, we're going to cross the river shore and we're going over to the county Waterford. Dear, dear. And we're going back in time, back in time to the 1959 to 1963 era to coach J.G. Hickey, one of the great teams of all times in hurling. To be part of that team must have been, well, wonderful. To be captain of that team, well, was something extraordinary. And of course, the man concerned today was part of one of the finest hurling teams of that age or any age. He could, they could have won more, the purists say, but they did win all, everything that was going. And on the way, they beat Tipperary, Cork and Kilkenny after a replay. The Cats always sneaked those old points and right, fluky yeah. goals. Apologies, Lee, but you always get them. And, but when they came back for the replay against Kilkenny, I was just doing some research. It was amazing to see that Kilkenny were six points up after ten minutes, and still this Waterford team came back and won the second senior title. And Frankie Walsh was the man there. He was he was also man of the match. And to quote one of the papers at the time, and here's what they said: No captain could have accomplished more in inspiring his men to victory. And of course he finished in the glorious 63 league final against Tipperary. But there's one little story I like to tell you about Frankie Walsh. They were picking the Railway Cup team and the great Mick Mackey was sitting down to pick it. And when they came to the half hour line, he said, first man on, Frankie Walsh of Waterford. Then they were picking the centre forward on the other wing. And somebody said, we'll pick so-and-so from another county. He's a small man, somebody said to Mick Mackey. What do you mean, says Mick Mackey? Frankie Welsh might be small in stature, not in heart. In, in my book, he's number one. In our book, he's our first recipient this evening. And who better to give it to him? Who better to give it to him than a man who postponed the trip to Dublin, who has been with us since the beginning when we were very small, Tipperary's own Jimmy Doyle. Come around to the camera. Jimmy, come around to the camera. Hi. We're not used to the camera, Dad. <laughs> Hi, Frank. Good, man. Good stuff, lads. Good stuff. Two grades. Yep. Mr. Moore, please. We'd be delighted for a few comments from the man who had given them to him and Well, first thing I must say is, uh, have to look behind, I have to look behind me to see it's the same man is receiving this thing of all the accolades that are being made here today, kind of thing. But the one thing I would like to say is congratulations to all the committee here. I don't know, I, naming names is very dangerous. But I would like to say one thing. It's nice to, after all the years, and especially to receive it from a man I admire very much, Jimmy Dyke. 
And also I'd like to say a kind of thing. It's Tipperary Crystal that is presenting this, and Tipperary Hurlingham is very, very dear to my heart. They probably hurled the same way as I did, with Vilni. <laughs> but thanks again to everyone. Thanks for all the Mount Sinai lads for coming up here. And, as, and in particular, a very good friend of mine, yeah. his guest speaker here tonight is Pat Fanning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, well. I said that naming names is dangerous, quite, but unfortunately you can't avoid those things. And I would like to thank everyone here for the very kind and generous award. Thanks very much. And for the player of the present in Waterford, and he indeed is an example of commitment to training, he's an inspiration to his colleagues, he suffered a serious injury, he's back, and many is the time when the Waterford defence was in peril, one could see the blonde head of Dotty Form coming out, ball and man and training. things about people like Dahi Form is that they're an inspiration. Nine years on a county team, I don't have to tell Waterford people or anyone else that the near misses, the disappointments and the heartbreaks. And to be still going strong is a great achievement to Dahi and the people involved. A railway cup man as well. So we leave Dahi and Jimmy. if you want to die. Um, I will, yeah. First of all, I'd like to thank um, the people that invited me in here today. Um, I think it's a great thing for the locals, the local players in particular. And also, it was the first thing that I ever won water for claim in nine years. <laughs> <laughs> so what can you do? I wouldn't swap it for the world. There you are. the man with half. Now we cross the shore and we go north to Tipperary, right up to the heart of it, for the very top of it. And we talked to a man there in 1971. He captained the Tipperary team and they played in the 80 minutes final. And in 1992, he was still captaining Tipperary teams because he was captaining the Masters team, the over 40s, and they won it again. Tyg O'Connor, a man who won on the 21 all Ireland's in 67. And he was on the first All-Stars with four other people. There were Mick Roach, Babs Keating, Francis Lochnan, and our man today, Tyg O'Connor. Talking to Ty today, you'd be amazed. Nowadays, we look at the television and we see the jerseys are exchanged, but not in 71. The jerseys they won on the All Island, they used them when they were on the All Star. So there was economies even in 71. And also, if you're interested in that kind of information, he was captain the team in the first All Island that was ever on colour television. Well, what a, a great man he is, and he really looks fit today. He told me to put on a few pounds over Christmas, heavens, look at me. But anyway, Tyg O'Connor, it's a pleasure to have you here. You were an adornment to the game and a great leader of men. Thanks, Paddy. Thanks for your kind words. Uh, as with a previous speaker, I'm, I'm, I would like to compliment the organising committee. Uh, everything here has gone off terribly well. When you get to my age, <laughs> all that's left now would be the, would be the, the charity gigs or <laughs> the over 40s. But the main pleasure to me today is to meet so many people that I'm, I haven't seen in a long, long time. I've met them from uh, quite a few from Waterford. And one of the first things I heard when I came in tonight was this rivalry between Tipperary and Waterford. Um, and I, I could stand back from that because we, we have our own up in North Tipperary between Tip and Offaly. But down here, down here, I can, I can, I can leave it to yourselves. You can find it amongst, amongst you. <laughs> also, um, Paddy asked me earlier who would, um, some of the final players I played against. And the man here beside me, Jimmy Dyle, would have to be top of that list. Yeah, here we are. Uh, <laughs> Thank you.
think it's a credit to Jimmy that he comes back here each year and he's prepared to help out. Um, it goes to show, I think generally speaking, each, a lot of sports people are prepared to, to help out in, in um, a lot of these events. They, maybe it means giving back something for the years of enjoyment they had and, and a thank you to the supporters who for years either cursed them or encouraged them or cheered them or whatever on, on the playing fields. Uh, so I was happy, happy to be invited down, delighted to receive this award. Thanks to Jimmy, thanks to the organising committee. But especially, um, it was simple for me to meet so many of the people I haven't met in a long time. And, and a few from Waterford, um, Frankie Welch, we met of old, Pat there beside him. But Pat McGrath, I haven't met Pat now in a long, long time. At Mount Sion, we, we, we met in the, the Munster days. We clashed with Mount Sion. Uh, John Galvin as well, I haven't met John in years. And, and a few people, a friend from, from Cork, Jerry up there at the bar. Um, that to me is, is what today is all about. So thanks very much. Well, the present player in Tipperary is probably one of the greatest leaders of men that's playing hurling today. He's a man who gave Tipperary service in all parts of the field. He won under 21, of course. He won in All-Ireland Colleges in 78. And would possibly have got his All-Ireland medal sooner, only for a terrible injury in 84. A man who eats, drinks and sleeps hurling. I know of a case where he gave three young lads a lift coming down through Boris Lee, and he asked them about, do you know so-and-so? There's Liam Devaney's house and the three lads were drawn blanks. They didn't know anything. So at the end of the thing he said, lads, he said, do you know who I am? And one of the lads said, I think you're Bobby Ryan. Well, at least you know something about hurling, he said. And the Bobby Ryan is the player of the year, but unfortunately, Bobby, Bobby can't be here. There's no fault to Bobby's, he just couldn't be here. And we've asked our colleague from Tip FM, Jerry Long, I think, to collect the award on behalf of Bobby Ryan. Right, Jerry. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, on Bobby's behalf, I'd just like to tell you that seconds ago I was speaking to him on the phone. Um, he wants to apologise for being unable to be here, but like a lot of farmers, at this time of the year they can have a problem with cows and so forth. He spent all day today with a cow that was trying to calve and hasn't yet calved. Uh, but on his behalf, I gladly accept uh, this trophy. I think it's well earned and well merited. And on his behalf as well, I would like to compliment the committee and everyone involved in the organising of this function. Um, it's something that I think will grow and grow and become something major in Tipperary. I feel it should. I feel the people who have put the effort in from the start deserve that reward, that it should become a major function in Tipperary every year. And finally, I'd just like to say that uh, Ty O'Connor spoke a few minutes ago. He, he didn't mention me. You know, um, I was a referee. The event. <laughs> Uh, I always insisted on asking him his name. I feel that someone like Ty O'Connor, you shouldn't kind of belittle them by not asking them their name. You should always say, what's your name? And he always gladly gave it to me. And what he used to say after giving his name, I will not repeat because it's not repeatable. I'm also very pleased that we have some Limerick and Cork people here this evening and it's uh, true to the tradition in Tipperary that we show them the way all is and everything we do. Uh, Waterford people and Tipperary people and Kilkenny people are very big people and we like to bring those people in to enjoy the major occasions that we have. So Mr Chalk and uh, Mr Healy, you're both I'm sure more than welcome. But finally on Bobby's behalf, thanks uh, for Bobby and uh, I will certainly deliver this to him and be very pleased. Well, we, we said we have another inter-county award in Tipperary. Indeed, we have. And we're very pleased, too, that the girl concerned learned a lot of her camogie in Carrick. She learned an awful lot of it over the Carrick Lake, believe it or not, in that little field over there. And she was very kind today to speak about Willem and Bernie Lundgren for the assistance they gave her and putting her on the road to Camogie Stardom. And that girl was either centre field or half forward. Wherever Tipperary needed anybody to win in All-Ireland, remember, they lost one against Down the previous year. Maeve Stokes was available. Maeve Stokes played and Maeve Stokes was one of the stars.
Look at that, every other Right, Maeve. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Maeve, do you want to see? She, I believe it or not, she's a beautiful singer. We might get her to sing later on. Don't worry, I'm not going to sing a song or anything, but uh, I'd just like to thank the committee for having me here. It's a great honour for me to accept such an award, and it's it's great that they think of the Camogie, because I think we don't often get the recognition that we duly deserve. But once again, I would like to thank Willem and Bernie Lonergan. It was Manny the Sunday, Willem and Bernie drove me up to drum band when I was... Uh, playing under 16 and under 18 County Camogie and only for them I don't think I'd ever have played County Camogie or come anywhere near it so thanks very much Well we travel down the river shore of course it flows on by Mount Coyne it doesn't go to Thomastown but the player of the past that we've selected was of course no none other than the man with the flamboyant style, the man with cat-like agility, the man who brought two point-blank saves in 1963 and possibly deprived, deprived Frankie Welsh of his second All-Ireland and that man of course is Ollie Welsh. And to quote Eddie Kerr on the 63 All-Ireland, he said his first and last saves were the ones that won the cup for Kilkenny. He also did it against Tipperary and broke a 45-year hoodoo way back in 67. But Ollie Welsh, believe it or not, the first intimation that he got, he was on the county team. He was on the swinging boats in Thomastown. And he also has a unique uh, uh, distinction. On one occasion in 1960, it shows you the way people held the man in such esteem. In 1960, he was unable to play because he had an injury. And Nick, the late Nick O'Donnell, God rest him, and the Wexford team walked across to the dugout in Croke Park and each and every one of them shook hands with Ollie Welsh before they played the Leinster final. And he also has a, a very unique award. He has the Coop Cullen Award and he has the People's Choice Award given to him on a programme chaired by the great Michal O'Hare. And for Tipperary and Waterford people here, I would just point out a little statistic that may have us all a bit worried. Ollie Welsh trained the Kilkenny Junior team 84, 86, 88 and 90 and they won four All-Irelands. He is now training the Kilkenny Senior team and they've won one even though a prominent Gale in Tipperary told him he picked the wrong team. But there you are. It was a story of hurling. Ollie Welsh was hurling since he was nine years of age. Unfortunately, Ollie Welsh just came out of hospital. But who better to collect it than the man that collected the new Lee McCarthy Cup, Liam Fennelly. No problem to him, even Charles Mary Robinson. <laughs> I, I suppose uh, probably there's no man that could step up here to accept the uh, award on behalf of Ollie Welsh. But I'm delighted to be here because uh, he was probably everyone's greatest man as far as we, especially in Kilkenny, as far as we were concerned when we were going up to see Ollie Welsh play and even to see him in flesh. It's probably the greatest moment of our lives. So I'm delighted to be here to do that honour. Uh, I myself was here last year to accept the award as the, the present player in Kilkenny and we have uh, Lee McCarthy here this year. Uh, this time last year we probably never thought uh, we'd be back here as all Ireland champions. Uh, it's probably a great feeling to come to Carrick. Okay, we haven't the McCarthy Cup but we have it maybe someplace in Kilkenny today. So it's, uh, it's great to be here. Uh, just talking about Hurland, uh, I feel myself, what Hurland has done for me probably has uh, allowed me to meet uh, a great lot of people and make great friends with people in the game and people on the periphery of the game. Say that like a Jimmy Dial here beside me who was probably one of the finest players that probably people would say to myself and himself and Frank Cummins and all those fellas that hold the hurl the wrong way. So he was one of the finest fellas that hold the hurl the wrong way I've ever came across. Uh, also no Frankie Welsh, uh, no Frankie fairly well as well, and uh, there's several others here, uh, even outside the game, Jerry Chalk down there, uh, he's, a, he's a, a great Gael, uh, Dan Lynch, 
uh, when we were down last year, when we wanted uh, to go on a farming trip and we're looking for money, uh, Dan said he wouldn't send us farm, but he sent us a player, so he gave us a hundred pounds. <laughs> Again, and thanks for the invitation here again today. I'm delighted to be here. I loved, I'd like to thank the committee for everything. I think it's a great idea. It brings gales together from the three different counties. And uh, at the end of the day, we're all the one. Thank you very much. Well, anybody looking at the video today would have seen part of the expertise of the Kilkenny Player of the Present, all-star contender, and a whole lot of a unique collection of All-Ireland medals, minor, under-21, and senior. The man who snaps up the half-chance, the man who got that goal in the All-Ireland that put, the, as they say, the red and white of Cork out to sea. The man who got that beautiful point, and the man against Galway, who also slammed in a very, very important goal. A man who was injured the previous All-Ireland, and if he had remained on, who knows? But above all, I was trying to figure out about this man, Lee McCarthy, and I figured out he must have hurling in his family, and I started to check up, and lo and behold, I found out that Lee McCarthy is connected to the Doyles of Moon Coyne. Hey. Need I say any more? And, and nice a nicer fellow you couldn't meet, he brought in the Lee McCarthy Cup to give us a look at it earlier on in the year. And we're very grateful to Lee because he was very nice to people who, particularly supporters of Kilkenny, yeah. who were unable to travel out yeah, that, through yeah. ill health and he brought the cup around to them. And Lee McCarthy, it gives me great pleasure to call you up to see another exponent of the command. to me now. Paddy knows I'm not much good at this, so I'm not going to say be too long. I'd like to thank the Commission, I'm delighted to be asked in here today and thank everyone who's involved in the start. And now I suppose we go back to probably the most important awards of the lot the local awards, where we try to honour people, particularly people of the past. And we go again, we'll keep the same format, we'll start in uh, Waterford and uh, we start in Waterford and we go to our own club over there, Carrick Bay. And it's not often that we have a man who was at the very first meeting of the Carrick Bay Club and who actually paid for the, the posters to be printed and has a history of hurling and while they were waiting as they say to uh, get into the county of Waterford officially this particular man played junior hurling with Tipperary but lo and behold Waterford beat them in Dungarvan. He went on to play for Waterford in the 1947 National Hurling League and the 1947 Monster Hurling Championship. Played against Christy Ring, Paddy, uh, Paddy O'Donovan, uh, Dr Jim Young and all that great men that are only names to some of us, history uh, to more of us. But nevertheless he came back in 1970 was part of the coaching team of the St. Mullen Holling Club, a man who brought a video of the same club out in 1986-87 with our own uh, video man here, Lean Barry, and also he's a great conjurer, as Tony Reid knows, when a famous day in Dungarvan. And that man is the man who's given a lifetime to Holling, a lifetime to St. Mullen's, very well known man, John O'Reardon. He spoke, had he spoke about conjuring, I wish I could disappear just now myself. <laughs> but um, I'm very, I'm delighted really, lad. My age now, I'm the oldest I see us here. And I'm pr really proud and honoured to receive this award. And I thank the committee very much. And delighted to see that Frankie Welsh um, and all the rest of the lads that I knew years ago st still knocking around. And uh, one man I would like to mention, that's dead and gone now, after mercy on him, is the late John Cain. Here, here. The best man I think I ever seen in the world. Uh, thank, thank you all very much and thank the committee again. Thank you very much indeed.
Attleborough Shushdale lads. Now the next award is probably one of the most embarrassing awards that I have to do for a long time because it was kept on the wraps by my own club and I only got word of it late last night from the chairman. Uh, it's very hard if you have to give an award to someone of your own family. It's equally terribly hard if you're after arguing with that fella for years of what he was doing wrong. And it's, it's twice as hard if the fella concerns uh, tells you that, well, you are no good, should I know that? You don't have to tell me that. So the award for the young player of the year uh, by the St. Mullins Club, and the club's picked these awards, is John Finucane. Well, We go across the bridge now to the, the player of the present in the Swan, the illustrious team, the Halleys, they're known as, and lads, just a bit of cuteness there, we want it for all clubs, a bit of cuteness, and the man the Swan have selected is a man who's been hurling, I suppose, for every time I've seen the Swan team over 20 years plus, a man who in this year's championship scored one goal in 10 out of 112 against Ballangarry. And I don't have to tell here uh, people in Tipperary how well Ballangarry went on in the championship. Unfortunately, that man, like a lot of other Irish men, he's in New York today, but hopefully he'll be back for the Swan in the spring. A man who's given a lifetime of service, dedication to the Swan, still going strong, Sean Fitzpatrick. And I think Sean's son is going to take it from. Yes, indeed. You want to take that photograph? That this is a very important photograph to be going all the way to New York. Thank you, indeed. And the player of the past in the Swan Club is the man who has given a lifetime of service to the Swan Club. His people before them have given a lifetime of service. And it's wonderful indeed that all those families that have given this lifetime of service to the clubs, particularly the Swan and the Davins and the Moderns here, that we can reward them in some way. This man won an All-Ireland medal in 59. I had the unique distinction of sitting behind him in Cork. His son was winning a minor match, but Waterford was winning the Cena match, and I'm sure Patrick O'Fanny would remember that better than I do. But anyway, in 1966, he won an All-Ireland Intermediate Hurling medal. He's won Celtic medals, he's vice president of the club, he's been involved in the club, both himself and his wife have been involved in Camogie. You heard Maeve Stokes' tribute. Need I say any more? Willem Lonergan. <laughs> now, lads, a little bit of cuteness, please. Well, I'll say much. I just like to thank the committee. Without the committee, this award, I wouldn't be able to receive it today. And all I have to say is I go through the whole lot again. Thanks very much. And now we go across the, the road, as they say, to the Davins. And the player the Davins have selected is the man again who just was unlucky. He has over 20 years service with the Davins. He came in at the end of a great era. But nevertheless, that didn't stop his determination, his commitment, his dedication to the Davin club. Let it be centre back, full back, or anywhere they wanted to play him. He's given them inspired service. He's still giving it to him. He's not in the full flush of youth, but he's still hurling, and in my book, hurling better than ever, Denny King. <laughs> Denis, 
Yeah, oh, okay, as usual, the man of few words, but certainly tremendous ability on the field. Well, now we come to the player of the past for the Javelins. Now, I could have this book full of quotations, I could have it full of records of everybody and anybody, but words couldn't describe the man that's getting it. He spent a lifetime of hurling. To use his own expression, only if I had received years ago, he would still be hurling. Now, he's a fair age, he may be up around the 60s, he'd still be hurling. He's on another occasion out in Wine Gap, where the Davin team were going reasonably well. This man arrived and somebody said, where are the Davins? And I quote what he said, I am the Davins. <laughs> He played, he played for Tip in the senior and the junior. He was the man who, as he said himself, when the Davins were contested their first senior final, the great game against Sarsfields in Clonmel and the replay, this man, he said, I am the Santa Claus of the Davins because they brought me back. The final was played around Christmas. And I could go on all night talking about him. You know him. He's probably the Davins' Mr. Hurling. He's probably the great character of Hurling we have in Carrick. He's a man that is steeped in it. No words of mine could describe him. So I want a big bowl of us for Steve Cleary! Well, Steve, would you say a few words for us? Oh, yeah. Well, yes. Um, well, I remember now when I was there, uh, well, I, I'd say Jimmy now, like, in, the, in his head, there's back to it, like, but Jimmy couldn't place me there. When I, I remember Jimmy when he was a young fellow there in 1957 and 58. They were, we were both on the National Hurling Meet. You know, well, you, you went out to America anyway, didn't you? But, uh, of course, uh, well, you, you know, your mother, your mother didn't want to go anyway, like, you know. She, she said that you were too young. So, me and Larry came, we, we got the bullet, like, and what do you do about that, like, you know. So, in other words, I had to stay at home. Right? So, yeah, well, I had to stay at home anyway, so, well, now, like I said, Jimmy, uh, you were a fine hurler, and I would like to thank every, each and every one of those people here tonight that are here, and I hope and every year go by that I wish them all, all a happy Christmas and a happy new year gone now, like, you know. So I will say no more now. Like. You, knew, you knew the horror, didn't you? <laughs> huh? I remember the time when you got the bit of the hoodie ball and boom. Remember you got the bit of the hoodie and ball and boom in, in Eden when you played the National League in clear. You had your father throw another few hoodie balls, but you got the frog of the ball in the day. There you are, there's the man, the man of the fish, Steve Cleary. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it gives us great pleasure and we just ask for a little bit of cuteness for another few minutes because our special guest this evening is one of the great presidents of Common New Class Gale. A man who from 70 to 73, apart from the contentious issue of the ban, guided the association, dealt with people even in other governments on behalf of the association. A founder member of Mount Sign Club, a Warford minor selector in 48. Probably one could say in today's language he was the Brian McAniff in Waterford because he inspired him on to 59. And the, the you know, that man, of course, is Pat Fanning of Mount Sinai, or Parag of Fanning in Iraq, the Rong Kong Lutas game. But the point is that I'd like to tell you all here, and I've heard it asked in a quiz, 
that there are very few people in Ireland who have four provincial medals. But in view of his tremendous work for the Gaelic Athletic Association, I'm open to correction, but I think I'm 100% right in this one. Pat Fang received from the four provincial councils a provincial medal on, of, for each province when he uh, handed over office in 73. And it gives me great pleasure to speak to one of the great men in the common loot class grade and the association, Padre Rufani. But I'm absolutely overwhelmed by the nature and scope and depth of this function. I hadn't realised the extent to which it had taken root. And I can remember, you know, when you couldn't come into Carrick and utter the words Davin and Swan in the same breath. <laughs> While Mullins existed in lonely isolation across the river, accepted and barely tolerated. And I think this is indicative of the spirit of the GAA. This is what it is all about. This is, if you like, the very personification, the epitome of what the association was founded to achieve. Each of these clubs, in its own way, is a cornerstone in the community in which it exists. It reflects in a great way the spirit of that community, and the community takes great pride in it. And coming here tonight as a guest, and as to say a few words, is an honour I didn't think would come to me again. I think it was Teg who made reference to the fact that he was, uh, people of his age tended to be forgotten. But when you reach my venerable age, when all is missing is only the white stick and the guide dog. Uh, it is really wonderful to be so recognized again. Paddy made reference to certain things in the history of my time during the association. And my lifetime in the GAA has been one, as Tyke said, of his experience, one of total fulfillment. A life that would have been strangely deprived were it not for the association and the opportunity given to me to participate in the work of that association at every level. And as this is a club gathering, a gathering of clubs, may I say that of all my time in the GAA, the time most precious, the time most rewarding, and certainly the time most fulfilling, is the time spent in the club, among your own, working for your own, unknown and unseen, but conscious always of the tremendous effect your little efforts were having on people. That is the spirit of the GAA. the relevant names either here this evening, but looking at Frankie and looking at Jimmy, Frankie Welsh receiving from Jimmy Dye, there is just one wish remaining unfulfilled. And insofar as I am able and able to suggest it in certain quarters, I do hope that I will live to see the day when each of them is recognized nationally among the All-Stars, the Hall of Fame national level. When I was looking after minor teams in Waterford and Jimmy Dyle was emerging in Tipperary, he was easily recognisable as a man of stature, a man of tremendous potential, and a man who fulfilled that potential to the limit. A great man on a great team. Now you honour today people of the past, and it is well that those of today who are garnering all the honours today should recognise their, their indebtedness to the people of the past, because they are living on that tradition. They inherited that from great men, and the people you honoured here tonight are people of yesterday. Frankie Welsh, now I speak of Frankie because Frankie, like all of the men of 59, was virtually a son to me. I had a great deal to do with them, I know, and I would hope that I affected them and influenced them to a certain degree. But they were great people 
in a great era of great horrors and great games. The games were worthy of the men and the men were worthy of the games. Yeah, yeah. And that again is the continuing story of our Gaelic Athletic Association, constantly developing and evolving, continuing to give to people so much that is particularly and peculiarly our own. This tradition of Gaelic games should never be permitted to die. And in Carrick here today, I can see the strength and the depth of it. Because here is not merely a celebration of days gone by, not merely an honouring of people who are today hurling, but a guarantee that the spirit conceived and born more than a hundred years ago lives and endures, and endures because clubs yeah, yeah. like the Mullins, the Swan and the Davins yeah, live on yeah, yeah, and perpetuate yeah. that story. I don't think... to say today except as a former president and one who is unashamedly steeped in the spirit of the association to exhort you to continue your efforts secure in the knowledge that in service of the association you are serving yourself you are serving your community and you are doing a wonderful work for this country of ours Now, I would like all the award winners, if they can come up here for one photograph. We always have a general photo. I'm sorry about this, that you had to go back to your seat, but we hadn't room. And while we're doing that, we'll prepare... Thank you very quickly. We'll It's Monday the 28th of December 1992 and we're here at the Kickham Inn in Carrigan-Shore for the Triangular Hurling Awards which are presented each year uh, to players from counties Kilkenny, Waterford and Tipperary. I'm joined by Jimmy Doyle, Frankie Welsh, Pat Fanning and Liam Fenley. Gentlemen, you're all welcome. You're Jimmy, welcome. you're here since the outset. Uh, what are your first memories of, of this occasion? Well, I was invited here, as I say, six years ago and uh, I think they're a great crowd. The, 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 the first time I was invited, um, it was fantastic. To, to meet the players that I played against was fa fabulous. I love, you know, I love it. I love that type of thing. Frankie, you're a renowned Waterford hurler. 
Uh, you had many tough clashes with Tipperary people and Kilkenny. What does something like this mean to you now at this stage in your career? Well, Jerry, I have to say one thing. I have to say it is unbelievable, really, the response that was here today. And I have to say, as a clubmate of mine here, Pat Fanning, next president, and that, that it's been really fantastic to meet the people who are so interested in the hurling. The three counties are so close to each other. And to meet people who I never met for a long, long time, and their appreciation of the hurling skills going back over the years have been really amazed, kind of thing. You know? yeah. And uh, I would like to congratulate the committee again, kind of thing, for all the things that they did and everything. I don't know their names and all this type of thing, but it's very appreciative. Yeah. Right, thank you, Frank. Liam. You know, this thing started off as, as a local thing with, with, with three clubs in Carrigan Shore. It has now blossomed into a, a three-county affair. How do you feel as the current captain of the All-Ireland uh, champions to be here in Tipperary this evening? Well, it's great to be here, first of all. And uh, to me, the big thing about this whole triangle uh, episode is the fact that we can get to meet people from Tipperary, Waterford, and Kilkenny, and uh, players who I've looked up to down through the years, and friends who have supported me and who've supported Kilkenny, Tipperary, and Waterford. And probably that's what the GA is all about: is the fact you meet friends, you have a chat, you have a drink, you have a bit to eat, and you have a bit of fun and tell a few stories and a few lies. That's what it's all <laughs> yeah. about. <laughs> yeah, I think the lies were fairly <laughs> obvious this evening. Jimmy, you know, you were here this evening. You were making presentations to people, fellas like Frankie Watch. I mean. Frankie Welsh will be in the folklore of the GA and you will be in the folklore of the GA. What does it mean to you to be asked to do that kind of job? Well, as I say, playing for Munster, you know, Liam is there, he's Leinster. But I started at left half hour from Munster and Frankie took my position so they shoved me over right half hour. You see, <laughs> as Liam said, it's, it's a lovely thing to go back and meet the old players that you played with and against. And as, the, as, as I say, that's what the game is all about. You need it. You need that type of spirit. And that's the thing I love, yeah. to meet the people I play with. Uh, Jimmy, you know, the camaraderie here this evening is unbelievable. You have fellas like Frankie Walsh, praise in Tipperary, praise in Kilkenny. I mean, it's unbelievable to hear Frankie Walsh. Frankie was as tough as could draw the breath of life. And we all know that in Tipperary. Frankie, is it special for you to be in Tipperary and to be honoured in Tipperary? Well, I, I, I don't really know how to answer this now, Jerry, to <laughs> be quite honest. Yeah. But as, as one who played with Warford for many, many years and very honoured to play with Warford kind of thing, and as I said earlier kind of thing, I think they appreciated me more in Tipperary kind of thing than they did because I played something of the Tipperary hurling kind of thing. I don't know whether I'm correct in saying that now kind of thing, but the thing to me kind of thing, the last Railway Cup I played on, Jimmy was sick at the time and Jimmy gave the free taking over to me kind of thing. He said, well, if you take him, he said, I'll, I'll, I'll have her on the wing kind of thing. But I thought that to me was beautiful. A man knew his own capabilities and within the GAA when people know their own capabilities and work within that, I think, especially players kind of thing, I'm not talking about officials now or anything, but I think that is a one great thing kind of thing that a person is off, we all have our good days, we all have our bad days and for that to me I thought that was a signal honour for me and I appreciate that very much. Pat Fanning, former president of the GA. Pat, you, you were at the helm in the association when major changes were made, major important changes. What does it mean to you to be here at a function like this? Well, I think it's a very, very significant thing. And uh, this was my first experience of the event. <clears throat> and I was quite taken with it. Frankly, it surpassed all my expectations. But the idea was born within me now that I think it's a thing worthy of emulation. I, I was amazed to see three clubs whose rivalry on the field is legendary, and often that rivalry extended beyond the field of play. And to see those coming together in a great spirit of cooperation and a great exercise in cooperation to honour people of their area, embracing the counties of Waterford, Kilkenny and Tipperary. I think that's something that, as I say, is worthy of emulation. And I would like to suggest, if I may, that 
Others may copy it because while rivalry is all important to the games, rivalry can exist in, in company with cooperation. And the rivalry between these three clubs will continue to be as intense as it will, but the friendliness behind that rivalry will make them all the stronger clubs and make them more ready and more able to fulfil their role as clubs serving their own communities. I think it's a really wonderful event. Pat, we saw this evening fellas like Liam Fenley, Tyg O'Connor, Dahi Ford, chatting away together, talking about things that happen in games over the years. Is that not basically what our association is about? That is absolutely what our association is about. We often say we bury our dead in style, and so we do. And it's a, a GA funeral is a wonderful celebratory occasion. Well, now you have it here today with, as you say, Liam and Frankie and Jimmy and others, Tyg O'Connor and a lot, meeting and talking because essentially they are the deepest of friends. A friendship forged in rivalry and forged in many a hard battle, but never with rancor. And however bitter, and that's, not, that's a misuse of the word, but however strong the rivalry as uh, demonstrated on the field, always, invariably, I have never come across the two hurlers in any generation, and I have experienced a few generations now, I've never come across two hurlers who bear animosity one for the other. Always the friendship, always the good days are remembered, never the odd moment when, if you like, rivalry spilled over. That is a manifestation of what the G is all about and its effect on people. Yeah. Liam Fenley, you're living in Kilkenny, you're bordering Tipperary, you're so near to Tipperary it's not funny. Yet, you come along here this evening and the that, that the goodwill shown by you <coughs> and the Kilkenny people and by the Tipperary people to you, is that very important to you as captain of the current Kilkenny side? Yeah, it is most important because uh, it is what probably, as a player, that's played a few years, that you expect from uh, from players on the county teams. And I have a feeling that any player that wears a jersey of any county knows his depths and generally is a pretty good fella and knows how to uh, mix and how to talk to people and how to understand people because he go he puts up with the good and the bad. But apart from that you have the people, the supporters from the various different clubs here, supporters from Kilkenny Tipperary and Watford as well. And it's a great occasion to see them get together in a time of festivities and having a good chat and having a drink and having a bit of crack and driving to a certain extent but still enjoying every second of it. And I feel that's what the GA is all about. And that's why the GA is so good and so brilliant at the moment. Uh, people are talking about it's going to die, it's this, that and that. But the GA will never die for that reason alone because people go and enjoy the games and then they can go in months later and talk about the games and enjoy the games and talk about times past and meet players and generally have a, a right good day. Right. Thank you. Jimmy and, and Frankie, I could pose the same question to both of you. Jimmy, I'll take you first. Uh, the social aspect of the GAA now, as against when you started, you went you played Munster Finals, you came home that night and that was the end of it. Do you think what's happening now is good or bad for the association? Occasions like this evening? No, no. I think it's a good thing to see the likes of this thing going on. It's a lovely thing to, to, to be involved with, with, with counties that you, you, you don't be involved with. And it's the one thing that I always liked. As I say, you have Frankie here, Watford, you have Liam over here, Kilkenny. You know, we are enemies when we're playing. But when it gets to a, a stage when we are at a function, no matter what we are, we're God's people, it's a game, it's, we're not professionals. The game we love, and the most important thing is that we love the game we play. And that's what the game is all about. Frankie, how deep did the rivalry go? It was tough, obviously. Yeah, quite obviously tough, Jerry. And as Jimmy said, kind of thing, we played against each other. We played naturally. I didn't play on Jimmy or Jimmy, he didn't play on me. But the whole thing about it is, Tipperary Kilkenny Warford rivalry is going to continue and long may it live. But the thing, the most important thing, as Jimmy has said, kind of thing, you meet, you meet people, the game is forgotten after the thing. But I would think hurlers have a special thing and a special bond with each other. And if I, if I say it, if, if I don't know how old this going to or anything, they have more of a bond than the footballers. And I think without hurling in the GAA, I don't think I'd be a member of the GAA. And I have to say that, to be quite honest, I said. I, 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 to me, hurling has been my life. Pat Fannin influenced me, John Cain influenced me, Brother McGill influenced me. And that, to me, without the GA, I don't think my life 
It'll be short lived. Thank you, Frankie. Pat Fanning, the final word must rest with you. Over the years, you have been known to, be, to work and be active in the interest of players. You made a comment this evening that fellas like Frankie Welsh and Jimmy Doyle, you hoped it wouldn't be too long until those people would get Hall of Fame awards. How important is it that our former players should be properly respected and honoured for their achievements and their contribution to our association? Well, now, first of all, I must say this, that I, I have never totally in favour of the cult of the individual. But having said that, I think it is terribly important that players of yesteryear should be recognised and should be honoured. If only to bring to the mind of the youngsters playing the game today, not the men playing the game today, but the youngsters at club level and juvenile level playing the game, that these men existed and that these men, their achievements should be proclaimed to the world because they are part and parcel of the, very fa of the very fabric of the Gaelic Athletic Association. Without them, the association would not have developed or evolved as it did. Without them, the association would be poor. In other words, they will never know the extent to which they have influenced people, and that is a terribly important thing. Young people, they will never meet them, but young people are influenced by their actions, influenced by their hurling expertise to be thing. And as Frankie said, it is true, hurlers and hurling. Hurlers are, are a race apart. I went to America with hurling and football teams, and it was quite, I don't say this as a way of derogation of the footballers, but totally different in their attitudes and actions. You identify the hurler immediately, and there is that closeness among them, whatever the county, whatever the origin, and whatever the opportunity offers, it should be grasped to pay tribute to and commemorate properly the people whose yesterday, yesteryears have given us our today and our tomorrow. Pat Fanning, <coughs> Jimmy Doyle, Frankie Welsh, Liam Finley, gentlemen all, thank you for joining me this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. No, that's perfect. And you don't have to hear it. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> It will now be suitably edited in half it will appear. Is that so? Oh, yeah. yeah. Not anything I do. No, I don't even know. No, no, I insist on that. Radio stations do. No, the not going to say that exactly. Anything you said will stand over it. I insist, obviously, if I don't Yeah, I know. That's only right. Yes, well, I'm a great believer in that. That's very unfair. The whole complexion of everything can be changed. Oh, no, no, no. It'll be as. You're better off doing a thing live, really. Carrie Dan, someone there to blame Don Dagg or something. Carrie Dan was on the. The parish priest came out as a man I was playing at. He said, would you let that man alone? He said, he's not touching you. He said, and the legs were being whipped off me. <laughs> you know, you child. <laughs> <laughs> you do nothing, really. Well, it's just that kind of spirit, though. That kind oh, of thing. It's extraordinary. But that... <laughs>